Hi and welcome to Electrocoagulation 101. My name is Juan Carlos Herrera and I am the Director of Sales and Applied Technology for Clean Environmental Solutions. I'm very happy to take you through these slides to tell you about how electrocoagulation works and what differentiates us from the rest. Electrocoagulation is a process that has been around for a number of years, actually all throughout the 20th century. It primarily has been known as play technology. In the last 10 years, uh, it has been uh, very popular all over the world, the US, South America, Europe, primarily for the treatment of heavy metals. So how and what do we offer a clean environmental? Basically, we know that the industry is looking for uh, cost savings, a small footprint, how can they make the process more effective? So we answer those questions by saying that, number one, we minimize the use of chemicals with our process. Secondly, we increase the performance with a minimum energy requirement. This means that we make the process simpler, simpler to operate using the lowest amount of energy required to achieve that. And the third aspect that we offer with our technology is to minimize the byproducts of wastewater treatment. Every wastewater treatment in the world will produce some kind of byproduct after their treatment. This makes sense. You're removing contaminants. The purpose of any treatment is to make those contaminants that at the beginning are soluble and make them insoluble. So they're going to come out in some form. And this is called a sludge. We generate a very small volume of sludge with our technology and 99% of the time is a non-toxic type of sludge which makes it easier to uh, handle. Electrocoagulation is made up of two words obviously. Electro meaning that we apply electricity. We apply electrical charge and coagulation is basically the art of making the contaminants or the particles come together and this is done by increasing the surface charge on those contaminants. So getting to the point of how the technology works in general terms for electrocoagulation to happen you need to have an anode and a cathode and the water with the contaminants will flow between those two uh, fields if you want to call them or those two aspects. As you apply electricity, many things happen. The number one thing that happens is that the anode gives off electrons to the cathode. By giving off the electrons, the anode becomes sacrificial. It becomes, uh, it, beca it, it erodes, basically. It gives a part of itself into the process. But these particles that come out of the anode are key and they are crucial because they provide the metal hydroxides that are the ones that are going to cause the coagulation, they are the ones that are going to create change in the particles in the water, they are the ones that are going to cause the contaminants to come together into the particle. Now, this is the key that we need to think about. As the anode becomes uh, more eroded, there's going to be an increase in the space between the anode and the cathode. There is a gap increase that continuously will, uh, will happen until the process is no longer effective. Now our technology, we have been able to worn out the, the anodes almost completely and the process is still happens. It's very efficient because we have a different design which I'm going to talk about in the, in the next couple of slides. But the thing that I want you to notice that is very important here is that the gap that exists between the anode and the cathode has a direct impact on the money that you pay for the process because the larger the gap the more voltage you need to go across and if you use more voltage you make the process more dangerous from the health and safety perspective and also it is more costly because you're going to use more electricity. Let's take a look at play technology. 
display technology is a series of anode, cathode, anode, cathode, anode. And the arrow there symbolizes the movement of water. Now, this could be at a stationary setup where the anodes are just sitting in the water. And um, the water is, is being electrified. And so only the water that is between those fields are actually being affected. Most play technology are open type of system so they're, they're not they're all atmospheric so it's kind of hard to push the water directly through the plates but regardless the number one disadvantage is that it's heavy these plates are heavy and large because they need to provide the surface area for the plate um, to treat a certain amount that area is directly related to the flow rate that you can treat the water okay so the first disadvantage is that it's heavy the second is uh, that you need a very large footprint which most industries don't have a space for wastewater treatment and the third disadvantage is that it plugs easy and the reason it plugs easy is for a couple reasons number one is because it's atmospheric and number two because the the anodes are made of a lower grade type of steel that has more garbage in it, has more gunk and all that gunk comes out and it comes out as a paste that is sticky and it gets everywhere and it's very hard to handle it also coats uh, everything around it it is a very nasty uh, type of uh, paste that is from all the all the lower uh, grade garbage is basically in this this type of uh, this type of um, material. I want you to take a look at this anode in particular. It has two cathodes on either side, meaning that that anode is going to be worn out from each end. Now, right from the get-go, plate technology has a very large gap between the anode and the cathode to allow the water to be between there. As the anodes were, uh, uh, are worn out, the gap becomes larger and larger. And as I mentioned before, when the gap increases, so is your voltage and there is the cost of the operation. You're going to pay more money to run this type of application. Our technology is called helical cathode electrocoagulation and the beauty of it is that it comes all in a cylinder. Both components, anodes and cathodes, are inside a cylinder. This makes it very compact, uh, not heavy. Number one, we use a hollow pipe uh, made of a better grade of steel that doesn't give those byproducts. As I mentioned earlier, by being hollow, we make uh, everything less heavy. Uh, a cylinder has more surface area than a linear configuration. We are not open to the atmosphere so we can actually push through a certain amount of water making it uh, less of an issue for plugging. And most importantly and the best part of all is that the gap between the anode and the cathode is only three millimeters up to ten millimeters again I said in the past we have have a larger gap which is still doesn't give us uh, an issue in terms of money we run very low voltage applications all our voltage is around between two volts five volts seven um, up to maybe nine volts uh, the largest so I have a client that uh, uses about a dollar eighteen cents a day to treat ten thousand liters of water in electrical consumption because his voltage is only five volts. Okay, so that makes it more cost effective. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I hope that you come back and listen to the other ones.